Hello, this is Art Gaines. This is a tutorial for how to install Flux Gym so that you can create your own LoRa's for Flux. And then you can use them in Comfy UI or Web UI or whatever system you're using. First thing you want to do is you have to install Python. It has to be version 3.10. So to get Python, you will have to go to the Python website or I will provide the link in the description below. Do not click on this very attractive looking download Python button because we do not want the version 3.13, we want version 3.10. FluxGym will not work without a lot of finagling unless you choose version 3.10. So to get version 3.10 we scroll down to this little section down here and scroll down until we find version 3.10.11. This is what I used. I've also seen other people use 3.10.10. .10. But I used 3.10.11, so that's what I'm going to demonstrate. Click on that, and then scroll down to the installers. And I'm going to use Windows Installer 64-bit. Click on that. The installer will appear in your Downloads folder, so open that up. We want to do a custom customize installation. At least that's what I did and it worked, so we're going to do that. Hit Next. Hit Add Python to Environment Variables. And the default installation location, we want to change that just for our ease of access. I've created a folder in which to install Python, which I can access very easily. It's on my J Drive, AI folder, Python folder and then a subfolder called Python 3.10. So open that up, select that address, copy, ignore this, ignore this subfolder, that's not supposed to be there, but it doesn't matter, and copy-paste that into your customize install location bar. So J Drive AI folder, Python folder, Python 3.10. Now we hit install. Close that. Now we have to go to the FluxGym page on GitHub. I will, of course, also provide the link in the description. This all looks very complicated, but we can ignore most of this and scroll down to install manually. So before we proceed further from here, we have to create a folder in which to install FluxGym. So you can install it pretty much anywhere. You probably want to install it on a solid state drive. And we need to create two folders, one inside the other. The first we'll call demo-laura. Hit enter. Hit enter again to open up the demo Laura folder. And in here, we create a new folder, another folder called Flux Gym and enter the Flux Gym folder. Then up here in the address bar, type in CMD. This will open up a command line window, which it will run whatever commands you type in inside the Flux Gym folder, as you can see right there. We want to copy these lines of code from the Flux Gym page. Hit this button here to copy and control V to paste. Hit paste anyway. And now you'll have to hit enter again to run this second line of the script. Scroll down to here. I am running Windows, so I'm going to select these lines of code. Copy. Control V. Hit paste anyway. Let it think for a few moments. Hit enter again. Now at this point you may have already run into a problem which is that FluxGym might be having difficulty connecting to Python. If that happens you will get some sort of error message pop up in here. It will say something like can't find Python or something like that. And the best way to solve this problem is to go to Windows search and type in environment edit the system environment variables. 
click on environment variables, scroll down in this lower section to path, hit edit, and you'll have to enter in the Python installation location in here. So I'll demonstrate. So I installed Python here. I want to select this address, copy, and paste it in there. So that's where I have Python installed. We also want to add in the location of my Python scripts folder. So go in there, select this address, copy, paste, and press OK, and OK, and OK. Now, you might not have to do that, but I did the first time I installed this. So if you run into a problem with FluxGym not being able to connect to Python, that will should hopefully solve that problem. You'll have to close this command line window and uh, start over again, though. All right, so where were we? Oh, yes, we activated the the programming environment or whatever this is, um, you will see this env thing appear in front of your command line there. Well, then we can ignore most of this and scroll down to here, select this code here, copy and paste, paste anyway, hit enter again, let it run for a little bit, It might pause for a while, which will be somewhat concerning, but it's just thinking. As long as the little cursor is flashing, that means it's running. At least it, it should mean that. This should take maybe two minutes, I think. At least it does for me. It's very important to follow the instructions very closely, as closely as you can when running this. The difficulties that I had while installing this program stemmed entirely from not following the instructions closely enough. I thought, well, that can't be very important, so I ignored it, and it wouldn't, and surprise, surprise, it didn't work. So try to follow these instructions as closely as possible. You're not installing Word, you're installing some very sophisticated software. <laughs> if you have any sort of questions, don't hesitate to drop a comment on YouTube. I can't actually guarantee that I will see it because YouTube doesn't always notify me in a, an effective manner when I receive a message. If you really want to ensure that, you, that I see any messages you send, you'll probably have to do it through Substack. So I strongly recommend signing up for my Substack. All right, so we get here two notices. Um, a new version of PIP is available, and, we, and it provides this very handy line of code to upgrade PIP. Copy, paste, press enter, let that run. All right, now select this next bit of code here. Copy and paste, paste anyway. Press enter again. I know this can be a bit confusing because they have a bunch of unnecessary information and code in here, but just read through it closely and hopefully you you won't enter in any superfluous code or miss anything. Obviously you don't need to put in the Linux code and you don't need to copy and paste whatever this is, FluxGym app, uh, all this stuff. This is just telling you what you should find in your install folders. So just read these instructions and take note of them. And finally, run this command here. Install PyTorch, copy, paste, enter. Let that run for a while. It might tell you that it needs a new version of Torch, and uh, it'll appear in, I think, red or green highlighted text. And it might provide you with a line of code to automatically update Torch or PyTorch. All right, so we get a small error message here. And I don't know if we actually have to do anything about this, but it can't hurt to 
deal with this. So we're going to have to go to um, the internet to find a way to install the latest version of Torch. And I will provide a link in the description, but for the moment I will demonstrate how to solve problems like this. You can type in install PyTorch. I will provide this link in the description. So we copy that command, copy and paste, press enter. There we go. Easy as pie. Going back to the FluxGym page, we can now start the program. So from the FluxGym folder, we type in Python app dot py and press enter. And you have to make sure you have the, the environment activated when you do this. So if you're starting a new session of FluxGym, you'll have to copy and paste these lines of code here from the FluxGym folder command line. So anyway, like I said, type in python app.py, hit enter, and let it think for a little bit. Again, if you see the cursor flashing, that means the computer is thinking. It is not frozen. Okay, let's scroll up, see if we got any other error message. That's the old error message, so that's not relevant. I don't see any error messages, so that's good. And we have an IP address here. This will open up FluxGym for us. So control click. There we go. So if we've done this right, we should be able to enter in all this information and train Alora for ourselves. I'm going to demonstrate how I made my first Alora here. I won't actually start it training, but I will try to explain the process. So we type in a name for our Alora, which will, which in my case will be Art Gains BW for black and white. I was thinking I would have two different Loras, one for my color artwork and one for my black and white artwork. Since Loras work the best when they, when they have like uh, when they're as simple as possible. And uh, combining my color artwork with my black and white artwork is, that's a little bit complicated, and I don't want to complicate things. You can get around it by being very specific with your, with the prompts that you enter, the sample, uh, the captions, I mean, which I'll demonstrate in a moment, if you're very specific. Like if I put in a piece of artwork that was colored, I'd say um, a color illustration in the style of art gains showing whatever. And then if I had another sample image, which was some of my black and white artwork, it would say a black and white image in the, col in the, in the style of art gains showing, you know, whatever is in the, in the image. Okay, so trigger word. Trigger word, for my case, I will set to art gains. You don't have to put in a trigger word, but I'm going to here. I did when I ran this process earlier. Uh, flu flux dev is fine. Probably want to leave it on that. It will also work with uh, Schnell and probably whatever that is. Uh, enter in how much VRAM your computer has. In my case, I have 12 gigabytes. Uh, repeat trains. I don't know what that means, but 10 is good. Max train epochs. Uh, 16 is probably good. You might want to go lower. I think my my first lower would have been fine with less than this. Uh, expected training steps. This is uh, how how often the FluxGym will spit out some sample images while it's training your data to give you a, uh, so that you can tell whether or not the the process is working. And you might want to put in uh, 100 there. And uh, the the training data I'm using is 1024, but uh, you can tell the FluxGym to shrink them down to 512. Uh, I'm going to reset that to 1024 since that's what my sample images are. Okay, that was step one. Step two, data set. You want to drag and drop your sample images in here. Now, you can create a Laura with only a very small number of images or a lot more. I am trying to figure out what the maximum number is. So in some places, they say it's 30. Some people say 50. Other people say it's even higher. But you may only need as few as five. Okay, so here's my training data. I also have these text files which contain descriptions of these images. You don't have to do that. I'll, I will show you how to get around that. But just for the sake of speeding things up, I'm going to drag and drop these images and these text files into here. 
and you will see my images pop up with captions which describe what's in each image. You probably want to be as precise as possible when entering these in. These won't automatically pop up like this. You will probably have to type them in yourself. The other option is that you can click on this, add AI captions, and uh, the Florence AI system will attempt to auto-generate a description of whatever is in your image. I tried that and it didn't really give me good results, but you can experiment and you might have to edit the output that it gives you. Oh yes, I forgot. Over here in sample image prompts, you want to enter in the prompts for the sample images that FluxGym will spit out every once in a while while it's training your LoRa. In my case here, what I'll type in is a black and white image uh, um, in the style of art gains showing a girl in a spacesuit shooting a laser pistol. And you press enter, and you can enter in a bunch. You can do one, you can do two, you can three, you can do put in, put in as many prompts as you want. All right, I think that's it. At this point, you can press start training. Now, what will happen the first time you do this is your computer will download Flux, which may take quite a long time. And it will also download a bunch of other data sets that it needs to work. But once that's done running, the train log will, will begin spitting out text. And uh, if you have uh, this, about five or six images, you'll get sample data coming out of the system every 15 minutes or so. It took, when I ran this the first time, it took, I think, about two hours to train 16 epochs. It will tell you when it uh, increments to a new e epoch. And, uh, oh yeah. And whenever it generates sample images, they will appear down here. The first few might not look so good, but as time goes on, the sample uh, AI-generated images will look better and better, hopefully, if you've done all this correctly. I'll show you the results that I got. In the Outputs folder, you'll find a folder with the name of your LoRa. It will be right there. In my case, it's artgainsbw.safetensors. I can copy-paste that into Comfy UI or Web UI or whatever system you're using. But I will also have this folder here, Sample, in which your sample images will appear, the ones from, from down here. So as you can see, let's open up Preview. I don't know how familiar you are with my style, but these first three images, they don't really look like my style. They are black and white images, but they're not really my style. And then by the second epoch, there was marked improvement already. This is already a little bit closer to my style. And then as time goes on, they get better and better. And uh, so, yeah, so that, uh, that is the sample data. All right, I think that's it. Like I said earlier, don't hesitate to drop a comment, preferably through my Substack. I'm more likely to notice it there if you want to help me out so that I can continue bringing you stuff like this and help you do it yourself and create some awesome artwork. You can get my book, The Screaming Void. It's available on Amazon as an ebook, hardcover, and softcover. If you like Alien or John Carpenter's The Thing or The Chronicles of Riddick, you might like it. It's a good story. Thank you very much.